dear ones. So this video today is for those of you who have discovered Reiki. Maybe you're thinking about scheduling a session or you already have scheduled a session and you are contemplating receiving Reiki healing. This question comes up a lot of how can I prepare for a Reiki session? What do I need to do before I meet with the Reiki healer? What can I do on my end to get ready? So in this video, I will discuss six things that I would highly recommend that you do prior to receiving a Reiki healing session. Okay, so the first thing that you can do is when you're scheduling the session, so when you're communicating with the practitioner and trying to set up a date that works for both of you, I think it's really important to be mindful of your potential stress level on whatever day you're selecting. So if you can, choose a day that doesn't have a tremendous amount going on. So, you know, those days where you're like, your to-do list is very long and you have to do things back to back to back. You're kind of like rushing from thing to thing. That would not be an ideal day to schedule <coughs> to schedule a Reiki session. What I would recommend is selecting a day that is either on your off, like a break day, <clears throat> a vacation day, um, a weekend, a rest day, or if you can't do that, at least selecting a day where you're not rushing from an appointment and then after the session you have pretty much the rest of the day to kind of chill. So pick a day that's pretty as stress-free as you can manage it because after the Reiki session you might feel the need to rest. So you know if you have a bunch of things scheduled after the session it might really just be really uncomfortable because all you want to do is rest but you have to do all these other things. So pick a day that is relatively less full of stuff going on. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing that you can do to prepare for your healing session is to follow the instructions of your healer. I mean this might seem kind of obvious but I think it needs to be said. You're investing your resources, your money, your time into receiving this healing session so you want to get the maximum benefit out of it. So each Reiki practitioner has different suggestions or guidelines that they will offer and some go into more detail than others but you want to check when you make the appointment you know is you can ask them is there anything that you'd like me to do and some will be you know very specific and some will just say no just show up you know so um, it all depends on your specific practitioner every Reiki practitioner is different for me for example when you schedule a session with me what I'll do is I will send you um, what I call my new client intake form and it's basically a questionnaire of about seven or eight questions um, that you can fill out previous to us meeting so you can um, type out the answers in like this Microsoft Word document and then you can email it to me a few days previous to when we meet so that I can sit with the information and just let it permeate and soak into my being and this will help me to help you because I have a better understanding of where you're coming from and what you're seeking in the session so I will ask you, you know, what are you looking for? What are you looking to experience? What are you looking to heal? 
That way, if I have all this wonderful written information, when you step through the door on the day of the session, I'm really ready for you. I'm really ready for you. I've had enough time to sit with your issues and concerns and you know your unique personality that I've read shining through your words. I really, really love setting up sessions this way. So this is what I specifically ask clients to do. I also do say um, for me specifically that if for some reason you can't fill out that form in advance of our session, because sometimes people do um, have crises that pop up at the last minute and I will see people um, in a relatively short span of time, like sometimes I even book on the same day. So maybe you don't get a chance to fill out the form. And if that's the case, then you can always just fill it out, you know, and bring the form with you and I can read your answers while you're here. Or you can just, you don't always have to fill out the form. I can still see you if you don't fill it out. <coughs> it's just nice to have the form. It really adds a uh, layer of depth to the session. So that's the second thing. Follow the instructions and guidelines of your specific practitioner. The third thing that you can do to prepare for your Reiki session is begin the moment you schedule the session to begin to drink lots and lots of extra water than you normally would drink. So whatever you normally drink, I would advise that you try to double that amount. So why? Well, Reiki and water, as I like to say, are best friends. They go together like PB and J or the birds and the bees. They're friends. When you receive a Reiki session, What's happening is your whole system, your whole being, is being upgraded. Like a computer, it's being upgraded. Well, every time your being gets upgraded, the amount of water that your being will require to maintain that state goes up. So, it's true that if you ask someone how much water they drink, it will typically correspond to their level of health. The people that drink the most amount of water, that make it a point to have water throughout the day, those people tend to be very healthy. The people that don't drink a lot of water, that are drinking a lot of soda and um, drinks that actually dehydrate you and rob um, the body of water such as coffee and tea and sugary drinks like that, those people tend to have a lot of health problems. So as soon as you book your session, just become more mindful of how much water you're drinking and aim to increase it. Double it if you can. The fourth thing is on the day of your session, when you wake up in the morning, if for some reason you're feeling bad, if you're feeling stressed, sick, tired, depressed, anything negative that day, that's actually okay. And I would still recommend that you come to your session I've seen this so many times where a client will schedule a session with me and then they'll cancel it at the last minute because they wake up sick or they wake up just feeling out of sorts in some way or maybe they didn't get a good night of sleep. <clears throat> this is actually counterproductive because in truth, when you're not feeling well, that's a really great time to see a healer. Just kind of like the idea of when you go see a doctor, you know, you're not going to be shiny, happy, feeling great. You're probably 
unless you're getting like a, um, a yearly physical or something like that, you're probably going to feel kind of crappy because that's why you're going to the doctor. It's the same with a Reiki session. You don't have to feel sparkly and shiny when you go to see a Reiki practitioner. In fact, you probably won't. When you schedule the session and when you make a commitment to yourself and the universe that this is indeed what you're going to do, you're going to get a Reiki healing session, what tends to happen is that as soon as you book that session, the healing begins. So it often actually happens that deep issues, challenges, subconscious feelings, repressed emotions, they actually start to seep upward once that session has been scheduled because the healing begins the moment you make that commitment to yourself to that you are ready for healing. So don't freak out if you're feeling crappy the day of your session. I would say, you know, go ahead and keep that appointment with your healer. It's actually the perfect time to see them. Okay, so the fifth thing that you can do to prepare is wear comfortable clothing. Wear clothing that is loose, that is especially loose around the middle, around your waist, so that you can breathe easily and deeply. <sighs> During a Reiki session, you may have an emotional release where you're breathing deeply and releasing old toxic emotions. Sometimes that involves crying and sometimes that involves laughing. I've had Reiki sessions with people where they just like dissolve into hysterical laughter because they're just, it's a way of letting the body release. So you want to be super comfortable and um, depending on your level of comfort with your practitioner, um, you know, you could even wear pajamas. I can't really imagine a practitioner that would frown upon that. For me, um, I often tell my clients, you know, hey, if you want to show up wearing pajamas, I think that's awesome because it gets, it helps to get you into that restful, um, relaxed state. Sometimes my clients will show up here at the healing space and they will be coming from somewhere else, so they'll bring pajamas with them. And they'll, um, you know, change into the pajamas once they arrive. And I can immediately sense the change of energy from when they show up in their normal clothes and then they put in their pajamas. There's this per very perceptible shift in energy. They just become more soft, more relaxed, more playful. So um, whether or not you wear pajamas, be comfortable. Choose an outfit that you really love and that is just very loose and comfortable. Okay, and the last and final way that you can prepare is I would recommend that you show up to the healing space early. So maybe like even a half hour early, maybe even an hour, but at least like at least five or ten minutes early and show up there early and either sit in your car, like if it's cold outside, sit in your car, or if it's nice outside and you like the neighborhood, go and take a walk. Spend a little bit of time in the fresh air and meditate basically. You know, be with your breath, the trees, be with yourself, Al allow yourself to kind of start to decompress, let go of all the thoughts of the day, and really start to come into yourself and relax. If you're sitting in your car, you could take a little nap, you know, set the, an alarm on your phone for 10 or 20 minutes and just like close your eyes and just allow yourself to rest. 
it's really important that when you arrive to a Reiki session that you are in already in a bit of a relaxed state because that will optimize the time that you have with your practitioner. Your practitioner is going to work with you to help release walls of energy that has been blocked within you. So if you can already start to do the work yourself, then that hour or two hours or however long you have with your practitioner will be even more impactful. So my friends, that's what I recommend that you do prior to a Reiki session. Let me recap those things. Um, schedule a session on a day that's not too crammed with things to do, that's a bit more relaxed, and especially that you can have time after the session to rest. You drink lots and lots of water once you schedule your session. You ask your practitioner if there's anything that they recommend you doing. If you're working with me, then I ask that you do your best to fill out the new client intake form and get that back to me so that I can read it and connect with you prior to the session. On the day of the session, if you wake up in a funk, I would really recommend going ahead and keeping that appointment and wear loose, comfortable, relaxing clothing and show up to your session space, you know, a bit early and be on your own and just start to begin that decompression, that relaxation, whether through walking or just sitting in your car and doing a bit of meditation, basically just preparing yourself to enter that healing environment. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And also, if you have already received a Reiki healing session and you have any tips for everyone about how you can prepare, please leave us that comment. And if you're a Reiki practitioner, and you want to add to this conversation about ways that you think it would be good for clients to prepare, please leave us um, your wisdom here. It's much appreciated. Okay, my dears. I hope you enjoy your Reiki session and know that whatever the outcome is of your Reiki session, it is for your highest and greatest good. Namaste.